Hello everybody, welcome to iExamBee's Legal Bee. This is Amrita, your law faculty at iExamBee. I welcome you all to my landmark judgment series that I have started in the month of January. Every 15 days, Legal Bee comes up with the recent landmark judgments passed by the Honorable Supreme Court of India and also some important judgments from the High Courts. This is a very innovative series, only you will find it at Legal Bee so spontaneously. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and take benefit of all these summary of judgments that you are getting at Legal Bee. Also, you can download the PPT of this video and keep a print out of all these judgments or a soft copy of all these judgments with you. These landmark judgments are helpful for your exam preparations like judiciary, UPSC, all the other legal competitive exams and also for those who are practicing it will help you all be in touch with the landmark recent judgments of the Honorable Supreme Court and High Courts. It helps you stay in touch and also it, it is a very good revision of the provisions of law. But for that you have to subscribe to Legal Bee and stay tuned. Let us start with the landmark judgments of the month of March. Every 15 days I come up with a video. In the last video I have discussed 1st to 15th March judgments. Now I will be discussing in this video the landmark judgments in between March 16 to 31st. Starting with the first one, Arup Bhuyan versus State of Assam and another that was passed on the 24th of March 2023 by the Honorable Supreme Court of India. It was a reference petition that was filed and this is relating to the association theory means whenever any member becomes a and whenever any person becomes a member of an association and that is relating to his freedom of speech and expression basically if he becomes a member of a banned organization that by itself will not incriminate a person this was held by the honorable supreme court in this case that just being a member of a banned organization will not incriminate a person unless he resorts to violence or incites people to violence. That means an overt act is necessary. This was held in relation to Terrorist and Disruptive Activities Prevention Act, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. So all these acts and the provisions as you can see in this PPT, you can pause this video and check out the provisions. Ya phir aap is PPT ko download bhi kar sakte hai. So I have legal point bata chuki hoon, jo Honorable Supreme Court ne is reference petition mein discuss kiya hai. And that is very clear on the point that an overt act is necessary. That the person just being a member will not be enough. He has to incite people for violence being a member of their organization then only he will be incriminated under these acts next director general dur darshan prasad bharti corporation and of india and another versus Srimati magi h desai in this case actually dur darshan corporation of india has gone against the high court of gujarat at ahmedabad order that is relating to the contractual services of the respondent employee she was working with dur darshan corporation she was entitled to the benefits of retirement and temporary services uh, is, a, is a clause which makes her applicable to the retirement benefits but actually she was a contractual employee so the question that was raised before the honorable supreme court was for consideration by do darshan was that being a contractual employee she was not entitled in a temporary capacity to all the benefits that is the retirement benefits so the Honorable Supreme Court has actually set aside the order of High Court of Gujarat and has held that the High Court has materially erred in observing that the contractual service would be qualified as service in a temporary capacity. So the services rendered by a contractual employee would be qualified as a service in a temporary capacity. But the question is whether in fact such contractual employee rendered the services as temporary or not. So all these things should be considered. That was held by the Honorable Supreme Court. Anil Kumar versus State of Haryana and others. In this case, the prisoner was actually uh, let out on parole by the order of the High Power Committee. 
period of his interim parole was actually excluded from his actual period of imprisonment that was undergone this is what is the procedure the interim parole period period is always excluded from the actual imprisonment period so he went to the supreme court under article 32 of the constitution that he was released by the high powered committee not because he wanted to be released on parole but he was released as per the section 3 clause 3 of the haryana good conduct prisoners temporary release act 1988 so as he did not initiate his release on his own under the interim parole so the period should be excluded this was his prayer but this was not accepted by the honorable supreme court and it was observed that the parole interim parole or special parole period cannot be included as a part of his imprisonment contagion of covid-19 virus had spread in the prisons or there were chances of of spreading in the prisons as we all know so the prisoners were relieved on re, released on parole that was also commonly known as the corona parole but since 2020 these people have not returned into the prisons back all of them so for that the director general of all the prisons new delhi had actually reached the honorable supreme court appropriate directions recently so the honorable supreme court has made directions in this particular petition that i have brought before you as you should be aware of the current uh, orders that are being given also along with the landmark judgments so the honorable supreme court has given the following directions that within 15 days all these people should report back to the prisons all those who are on the corona parole that is actually the emergency parole or the interim bail but this is commonly the term corona parole is being used for these people so within 15 days these people need to report back hemant bhai balwant bhai patel and another was a state of gujarat and another in this case the honorable supreme court of india has applied its powers exercised its powers under article 142 of the constitution to do complete justice the co- the the case was actually a financial dispute between members of the same family mother on one side and grandson and uh, mother on the other side so considering the facts and dispute as the mother was the, uh, on one side and the son and grandson were on the other side though the signatures were matching there was forgery that was committed financial dispute was for financial dispute was actually existing but the court has exercised its exclusive powers under article 142 of the constitution and has actually agreed that in this particular case the criminal proceedings shall be quashed even if there was certain um, amount of offense that was committed the things were admitted but since it is a family dispute there is chance of reconciliation so it is appropriate to quash the criminal proceedings in this particular case so this was also a very good learning case that was passed recently on 24th of march state bank of india and others versus rajesh agrawal and others in this case the state bank of india and others have come to the supreme court against the decision of order of high court of telangana what was the order of high court of telangana there was a challenge that was made to the reserve bank of india frauds classification and reporting by commercial banks and select fin- financial institutions direction 2016 that they were not giving sufficient amount of opportunity of being heard if actions were initiated under this act that was the main grievance so the high court of telangana has held that the principle of national justice must be read in the provisions of these cases as well so the supreme court also upheld this in this particular case when the state bank of india and other banks came to it that the principles of national justice demand that the borrowers must be served a notice even under this particular act so that was upheld the high court of telangana order was upheld the chairman and manager city union bank limited and another versus r chandramohan in this particular case the deficiency in service related um, issue has come up to the court consumer protection act everybody knows in that the deficiency in service has been defined under section 2 clause 1 clause g so what was the question actually in this case was that the burden of proving the deficiency in service will be on whom or there will be any presumption so the court has settled this position of law that there won't be any presumption with regard to willful fault 
imperfection or any shortcoming or inadequacy in the quality of the goods or services this deficiency in service has to be proved by the person who is alleging it there won't be any presumption in favor of that person it has to be proved the burden of proof lies on the person who is alleging this deficiency in services narayan chintaram chintandram choudhary versus the state of maharashtra in this case this is also an interesting case actually the additional sessions judge of pune has convicted an uh, accused and uh, sentenced him to capital punishment then he went to the high court high court has actually uh, also rejected the petition and then finally he reached the supreme court on the grounds of juvenility so the supreme court has actually went into the calculation of his age also and he was held to be a juvenile at the time of commission of offense so on that ground the court has has held that already he has served 3 years of incarceration and under the law as it prevailed at the time of commission of offense under the 2015 act of the juveniles he cannot be subjected to capital punishment so therefore the order that was sentencing the accused to death passed by additional sessions judge pune and subsequently that was confirmed by the high court of bombay as well was set aside and he was actually uh his his punishment capital punishment was not held as well by the honorable supreme court of india state of punjab versus dil bahadur in this particular case another very interesting case people actually reduced the punishment of rigorous imprisonment of 2 years to just 8 months in a particular case so the supreme court has actually restored back the judgment of trial court and held that sometimes the principle of sentencing recognizes the corrective measures and also there are certain occasions where deterrence is also required if you are reducing the punishment to just 8 months from rigorous imprisonment of 2 years the deterrence element will completely vanish off that is what is the concept that court has observed in this particular case and court has uh, mentioned here or observed here here that the deterrence is an imperative necessity that is depending upon the facts of the case to case so in the first decision high court has reduced the sentence and has shown mercy while applying the principles that payment of compensation is a factor for reduction so the court has observed that it is it is a misplaced sympathy and is a mockery of justice and has actually restored the decision of trial court prem kishor and others versus brahm prakash and others in this particular judgment the main question that was there was relating to the eviction petition that was dismissed for default the dismissal in default order was challenged as being a bar for fresh suit that is res judicata would be applicable so on that ground the complaint was rejected and then it was also upheld by the delhi high court but then they went to the supreme court and the supreme court held that this won't reject the plain S- uh, supreme court has restored this the suit afresh the court has said that the decision was not on merits court has went into the details and has observed that the words which we have quoted above certainly do not mean dismissal either on merits or on default it was argued that they the order should only be taken to mean what an order under 17 can possibly be and nothing else we are not impressed by the submission so the order did not purport to be one of dismissal of default or on merits and it cannot be taken to mean other than what it purported to be so the court has not considered that order as a order being dismissal for default and on merits and therefore has uh, held that the suit should not be rejected and restored and trial should start again Muhammad Muslim Hussain versus state in city of Delhi in this particular case what had happened the appellant had complained that his application for bail should not have been rejected by the high court this relating to bails also i have taken certain cases in this particular video you can observe it as it is very interesting the appellant is accused and he has committed offenses punishable under narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances act 
he has made an application for bail under section 439 read with 482 of the crpc regular bail along with uh, he has also seeked caution proceedings and uh, before the delhi high court and it was denied to him so the court had granted him bail as per section 436a of crpc and has observed supreme court has granted this bail and has observed that incarceration has further deleterious effects where the accused belongs to the weakest economic strata immediate loss of livelihood all these considerations have been made by the honorable supreme court and a lenient view has been taken and bail has been granted to the particular accused appealant is directed to be enlarged on bail and he has actually suffered a uh, certain amount of um, imprisonment that is he has suffered for around 7 years he was in jail suffering incarceration halfway he has reached his particular imprisonment so he should be granted bail in these particular circumstances i will share similar such bail cases for high courts also well towards the end of this video विठ्ठल मानिक खत्री वर्सेस सागर संजय कामले साक्षी विठ्ठल खत्री एंड अनादर दिस इज अनादर केस ऑफ हाई कोर्ट ऑफ बॉम्बे फेमस केस रिलेटिंग टू द डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस एक्ट एंड इंटरेस्टिंग केस द ट्रांसजेंडर इफ अ ट्रांसजेंडर पर्सन कमिट्स अ सर्जरी एंड कंडक्ट्स अ सर्जरी ऑन हिमसेल्फ एंड कन्वर्ट्स हिज जेंडर इन टू अ वूमन सो वेदर ही इज ही एंटाइटल्ड टू द रिलीफ अंडर डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस एक्ट सो द क्वेश्चन हैज बीन आंसर्ड इन एफर्मेटिव बाय द बॉम्बे हाई कोर्ट एंड द कोर्ट हैज हेल्ड एज अंडर द वर्ड वुमन इन सेक्शन टू क्लॉज ए इज नो मोर लिमिटेड टू द बाइनरी ऑफ वुमेन एंड मेन एंड इंक्लूड्स द ट्रांसजेंडर पर्सन ऑल्सो who has changed her sex in tune with her gender characteristics if she has got the gender characteristics of woman she can be considered as a woman for filing a petition under domestic violence act so this is a very important judgment as you can go through of the high court of bombay money rule islam versus the state of west bengal this is a judgment of uh, i told you i was to going to talk about bails more so in this case a bail petition of accused manirul islam and he is actually arrested under special task force case under various sections uh, offenses 120b 465 ipc forgery related 468 471 and explosive and activities preventions act section 4 and 5 section 14 of the foreigners act all these offenses were inflicted on him but since he has spent more than 4 years in jail and the trial that was progressing was quite slow actually and the maximum uh, sentence that could be served was actually 6 years so he has already served a uh, maximum part of his punishment maximum not maximum but near to maximum part of his punishment according to the court and the trial is slow in progress so he should be granted bail and uh, the the accused has a fundamental right to speedy justice that has also been observed in this particular petition while the bail was being granted under section 439 of crpc by the calcutta high court again a lenient view has been taken mohammad tariq kashmi versus state of up another instance i will let you know which is a very recent one the allahabad high court has granted bail on another accused he ha- is also uh, under serious offenses explosive substances act sections are there unlawful activities prevention act sections are there on him section 121a waging war related sections and 353 of ipc sections being on him also since he has served around 16 years in jail so this was the main ground that court has considered 16 years in jail is not Uh, is no doubt it is a very long period and it is prima facie case for bail has been made out in his favor this has been observed by the high court of allahabad in this particular case and again article 21 of the constitution has been taken into consideration here also that 16 years has he uh, sentence he has served out already again uh, there is just recovery of explosive substances and there is no connection yet that has been established Uh, in his against in to his detriment along with that recovery so 16 years he has already spent so he actually deserves to be released on bail this was held by the allahabad high court so these were all the judgments that i could discuss with you all from the march 16 to 31st that were the landmark ones or the important ones
stay tuned to legal bee for all such kind of recent updates and judgments and beneficial contents if you want any such kind of videos or you have any queries you can reach out to us in the comment section of this video or you can write to us at hello at the rate iexambi.com you can also call on this number and get all the details aap humare website pe jaake bhi sari details check kar sakte hain for all the courses available at iexambi as well and don't forget to subscribe press the bell icon prepare 50% faster with iexambi thank you